Hello students, welcome to another tutorial on linear motion. In this tutorial, we're going to look at the question I left you guys with in the previous video. I hope you had time to go through it. This question is a little bit tricky and there are two methods you can use to work out this question. One method is kind of very, very long, not, not too long necessarily, but it's a little bit longer than the method we're going to use in this video. But that method, the long method, is probably the one I would prefer or the one that I would first want to use if I first just came across this question. But the method I'm going to present here is more like a shortcut of doing this. The less involving, easy to follow. Let's quickly see how we can apply this easy method to work out this question. I hope you tried it. Let me know which method you use. Did you use the same method I'm going to use here? Or maybe you use a different method. Let me, let me hear about it in the comment section. Okay, so what is the question saying? Suppose you have a car with a maximum acceleration of A is equal to six meters per second squared and a maximum deceleration from braking of A is equal to negative 8.0 meters per second squared. We want to find the minimum time it would take you to start from rest, cover 500 meters, come to stop at the 500 meter mark. You do this by accelerating as much as possible for a part of the 500 meters, followed by a period of maximum deceleration in the final, in the final, uh, to the final stop. Okay, find the minimum time. Okay, so we, we expect our answer to be about 17.1 seconds. Let's see if we'll be able to find that. So I'm going to present the easy method here. And if you guys want to see the other method, just let me know in the comment section. I can make a video for the second method of, of doing this. So let's look at our solutions. So here again, we're presenting the, um, the easy method of working out this question. If, if maybe you feel your method is easier, again, you can just show me in the comment section. I can just talk to me. All right, so let's see what we have to do. Well. The method we're going to use here is more like borrowed from the velocity time graph uh, approach. So we'll start by just creating a simple sketch. So let's just try to make a velocity time graph for this, uh, for this car. So this car has to accelerate and decelerate in the shortest possible time, but it has to cover 500 meters altogether. So if it's going to accelerate, it starts from rest. So it starts from here, goes up, reaches some maximum velocity, and starts to decelerate, and comes to rest. So here, in the first part, we are accelerating. In the second part, we are decelerating. And after doing this, it will probably reach a maximum velocity somewhere there. OK. So let me just include everything else. This is velocity. And this is in meters per second. And lastly, here we have time, and this is in seconds. Okay, so here, let's say the first part as it was accelerating, let's say it reaches some final velocity. Let's call this V. So that's the final velocity the train reaches in the first part. Now, let's say it accelerates during the acceleration part, let's say it accelerates for a time t. But altogether, it changes from zero to a maximum time. By the time it's stopping at the 500 meter mark, by the time it's stopping, it takes a total time T. So I'm going to use capital T for the total time of travel. Okay, now what is happening here? Well, we're going to use the method of velocity time graphs to see exactly what is happening. So in the first part, let's look at what is happening in the first part. Well, in the first part, the train is not the train, this car is accelerating. So for the acceleration part, I'm going to use the definition of acceleration. Acceleration is equal to final velocity minus initial velocity over time. So when you look at what is happening here, the initial velocity for the train in the first part, as it was accelerating, the starting velocity is zero. So for this train, so I keep saying train, for this car, the final velocity, we labeled it as just V here in our question. So we can just say 
The final velocity is V, but the initial velocity is zero since the car starts from rest and it takes time T. So here, this becomes the acceleration. Remember, we, knew, we know what the acceleration was. In the first part, the acceleration was given in the equation as positive six meters per second squared. So this becomes six is equal to V over T. So notice that here we can make we can make one of these unknown subject of the formula. Since I'm interested in time, I want to find time and velocity. So I'm going to make V subject of the formula so that I can eliminate it should I manage to come up with another equation. So if I cross multiply it here, we have an expression for the final velocity as the product of six and T. So I'm going to hold on to this equation and label it equation one. So this was happening in the first part during acceleration. Well, so we see, we accelerate from here to the maximum velocity there. And then once we reach that, we start to decelerate and due when we come to rest after a total time t. So we've seen what is happening in the first part. Let's look at what is happening in the second part. Well, for the second part, if we use the same approach, notice that this part, our velocity at the top becomes the initial velocity. In other words, when we start evaluating the motion in the second half. So let me use grade for the, the second half. So in the second half, we see that the starting velocity is basically equal to that V we had in the first part. The final velocity of the first part is actually the initial velocity in the second part of motion. So remember that part. So yeah, so let me say, let me just label it V1 so that it doesn't confuse you when I start putting the final velocity here. But before we come to that, let's quickly look at what is happening there. I'll use the same formula. Acceleration is supposed to be minus u, final velocity minus initial velocity over time. But for the second part, the acceleration is given as negative eight meters per second squared. The final velocity, this car comes to rest during that second part as it decelerates. So the final velocity is zero. But the starting velocity is this velocity here. But we found it earlier on. We found it. I've changed it to V1. So let me just keep V1 there. So we found it. Since we found it, we can say that that velocity, we can say that that velocity, since it is V1, so this is minus V1. I can write V1 for now over T. But what is T in this case? Well, for the second part, T is from T, from that part up to this part. So in other words, for the second motion, the change in time that occurs here is actually the total time minus the time for the first part. So this is how we get the time here. So I'm literally saying total time minus t. If you're wondering, if you're, if you're getting confused there, imagine if the total time was, let's say something like 30, and in the first part, let's say it took something like 15. So again, I'm just using, let me not say 15 here. Let me say something like 20. So again, I'm just using these numbers as an example to show you how I calculate the time to move from T to capital T. To get the time from between these two points, you have to get the difference in the time zone, in the times there. So it would be 30 minus 20. So it would give you something like a 10. But again, these values, I just use them as an example to help you guys understand why I'm saying t minus small t to get to give you the time that it takes to decelerate. Okay, now that I've done that, I hope you understand why I'm using t minus, uh, capital T minus small t. Okay, with that, let's quickly come back here. We have our expression but we know what V1 is, we already found it here. So we can substitute, this now means we have negative eight is equal to 60, negative 60 over T minus small t, okay? So here, notice that this actually kind of makes our work easy because this small t here is the same as this small t here. Don't get them confused. This small t came for the time for the first part and even here, this came from the time for the first part. So it's the same thing. Let's simplify this equation a little bit further. So from here, if we cross multiply, 
we see that we're going to have negative eight capital T plus eight small t equal to negative six t. If I made capital T the subject of the formula here, notice that what I'm going to have is going to be, I can say negative eight t equal to negative six t minus eight t. So of course, yeah, it's negative eight capital T is equal to negative six small t minus eight small t. This right hand side will give me minus 14 small letter t. From here, we're making capital T the subject of the formula. So the expression becomes, if I divide both sides by negative eight, I'll have capital T is equal to negative 14 small t divided by negative eight. Simplify this further. Notice that we have our expression for the total time as positive seven over four multiplying the small t. Okay, now let's hold on to this expression as equation two. Now at this point, this takes us to the last piece of the puzzle. Well, if we were to sketch that graph one more time, So if we were to sketch the velocity time graph one more time, this is where we're using the velocity time graph methods of performing calculations of determining the, the distances. Okay, so what is happening? Well, I want you guys to look at one thing. To determine the distance traveled by a velocity time graph, we always look at the area under the graph. So we use the area under the graph to determine the distance covered by a velocity time graph. Now, what we have here is a triangle. How can we determine the area covered by, uh, the area of a triangle? In this case, we're going to use a simple method. Area is equals to half BH. So this is going to give us the total area of our shape. But we know what the total distance is. We're supposed to accelerate, then decelerate in 500 meters. So the total area is supposed to be equal to 500 meters. We want the total area to be equal to 500 meters. So of course, total area or the area under the graph is supposed to give us in magnitude, it's supposed to be equivalent to the distance covered. So because the distance covered is supposed to be 500, I'm saying even the total area is supposed to be equal to 500. So when I evaluate the area of the triangle here, this is supposed to give me 500. With this in mind, let me just bring this down here. So I should get 500 when I evaluate half of BH. Now, what is my B? Well, in this case, my B is the base of this triangle. So where is it? It's from this point all the way to the far end. Notice that at the far end, what I have is capital T. In other words, my B is just capital T. What else? H, the height. The height of my triangle is basically just from this point all the way to the top part of my triangle. And what do I have here? Notice that this is where we have that V, the final velocity after the first acceleration. I label it as V, then eventually I say, I'm going to take it as V1. So let me label it as V1 there. So in other words, my H is that V1. But remember, equation one, in equation one, we found the expression for V1. In equation one, we found the expression for V1, and it was this one here, 16. So equation one tells us that V1 is just 6. So when it comes to our equation here, this is the main equation, uh, if you want to call it that, it now means that we have 500 is equals to half B, we're saying B is just capital T, so I have capital T there, which is the total time. And then what is our H? Our H, we're saying our H is just V1. Now, we equation two gave us the expression for total time, Equation one gave us the equation for V1. So if we make those substitutions of equation one and equation two into this equation, notice that what we have is half of 
For capital T, we found this as 7 over 4t. And then for V1, from equation 1, we found it as 6t. So if we work out this, this expression now, what we have is 500 is equal to, when you multiply the numerators, you have 42t squared divided by the denominators, we have 8. We can simplify this further by dividing the 8 into 42. What we're now going to have is 500 is equal to 5.25 t squared. Here we can work out this expression for t squared, and t squared will be equal to 500 over 5.25. And lastly, t squared, or t only, will be equal to the square root of 500 divided by 5.25. If you evaluate the square root here, the value for t comes out at 9.76 seconds. Now, we're not looking for t. This t, if you recall, it's just the value of time or how long it takes to accelerate to that maximum point. So if, again, we sketch out the last time graph, the t we found is just the time at this point, 76 seconds. Now, what we want is the total time, which is the capital T there. That's what we are looking for. So remember, equation two gave us the expression for or the relationship between capital T and small t. So from equation two, what we had was t is equal to seven over four of small t. So in this case, we just have seven over four multiplying that 9.76 seconds. So if we evaluate this, we get the value for the total time as 17.1 seconds. So this comes out as the value for the total time taken for this, uh, this car to accelerate to a top speed and decelerate to, uh, to zero while accelerating at six meters per second squared and decelerating at uh, negative eight meters per second squared covering a total distance of 500 meters. Okay, so this is basically the easier method uh, that you guys could have used to work out this problem. I hope you find it easy to understand. There is another method, but the alternative method is not, not very straightforward. It is a little bit straightforward, but it is a bit long to get to the answer as compared to this method. If you want to see that, let me know in the comment section. I can make a video for it. Otherwise, this is... Um, uh, how, we, how we end our video. So this is the end of our tutorial. If you guys found this helpful, leave a like in the comment, leave a like. Let me know uh, how you found it in the chat section. We'll see you guys in the next tutorial. This was your tutor.